Hi, and welcome to this Novel Crafter video on how to write beats. You may have heard this term bandied around a lot in the AI sphere, both regarding super prompts and in writing beat by beat. However, they are not a new concept and have their origins in the screenwriting industry. To put it simply, story beats are the smallest unit of structure in a story that pushes the narrative forward. They can include actions, events, emotional shifts, or a conversation. You do not need to be writing with AI in order to use story beats to improve your writing. A novel comprises of acts, chapters, scenes, and beats. Just like how chapters break down a story into manageable chunks, beats break down a chapter. Each chapter within a novel should have its own arc, albeit a minor one, with a start, middle, and end, and a specific goal for your characters. Once you know what you want to happen in the chapter, you can then work on how best to accomplish those goals. Beats are instructions that show us as a writer, and by extension the AI, how the scene will progress. But why do we use beats when writing with AI? This originates uh, from the days of old, you know, two years ago, where large language models first became available to the public. These initial models had really not great context windows, like 4,000 tokens, and so it wasn't really possible to input all the information that you would need for a chapter in one prompt. Of course, now we get context windows of up to 200,000 tokens, but they are not yet reliable for writing an entire chapter or book using simple prompting. Just because an AI can read your entire book doesn't mean it can do it well. Even with precise instructions, AI can often add its own flair or misinterpret what you have input. Furthermore, if you're a pantser-style writer, or the complete opposite, you like having a really, really like fine control of your story, you might not want to plan out an entire chapter and have it written in one go. Think of writing with AI as akin to being a film director. You have an image in your head and you want to convey that. Because AI models cannot read minds, in order for you to get the image that you want down onto paper, we need to provide instructions. Treat AI as you would treat a writing partner. They don't know what you want unless you tell it what you want. This may be a new skill to learn, but it is valuable. Don't be disheartened if your initial attempts don't give you the pros you want. By working iteratively and making slight adjustments each time you go, you'll really get the feel of how these work. Okay, so how do we actually write the beats? The short answer is that there's no specific, like, ideal for this. However, this class is going to go into the various ways that our users have found to work for them. We suggest that you play around with all of these, or even use them in conjunction with one another, in order to find a workflow that works best for you. For this tutorial, we will look at some well-known scenes from Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Okay, let's jump into Novel Crafter. So the easiest way to think of beats is as a summary for the next passage of text, akin to how we summarise a chapter before writing it. This type of beat only contains general directions and not the tiny specifics. The easiest one to grasp the concept of is simple beats, for when you want to give the AI the most creativity in writing. For example, you've got two characters and they're talking, and you know they're going to talk about topic A. For example, I don't know, how to peel a banana. But you're not entirely sure how this conversation is going to go and you don't really want to have to think about it. You know, this is a great way to prompt a simple conversation. For this example, we're going to see Uncle Henry is watching the weather outside and spots a cyclone. He orders Dorothy and Aunt Em inside. Um, here I'm going to use the general purpose prompt, and um, let's give Mr. or Medium a spin. So as you can see here, it's very much going into detail, um, not only of Uncle Henry, but also the other characters, um, because the story is in third-person omniscient. In the actual story, this is all, like, two sentences. However, the AI is taking this really simple prompt and, and going crazy, like, look at this, it, it goes on forever. So using a simple beat is a great way of encouraging creativity. However, if you want something a little more guided, then a detailed beat might be for you. These are great for if you have a clear idea for how you want your scene to go, but are unsure how to phrase the exact prose yourself. Very close to the original prose, saying Dorothy retrieves Toto, heads to follow, you know, it's step by step, and you could, you know, describe a conversation this way. 
Okay, so you can see here that it's still embellishing, but it's sticking much closer to what we've said. There are two paragraphs on Dorothy retrieving Toto. To be fair, it keeps going on. Yeah, so I mean, here we can see that whilst it sticks a lot closer to our instructions, there is still creativity, and it's it's making a com you know a considerable chunk of writing from this. You can always turn the temperature down as well if you want your prose to stick more closely to the beats. Using a detailed beat is a great way of just kick-starting the creativity. Microbeats. These are great if you want to add a tiny bit of detail to your novel whilst in the editing process, or you've missed something out, or there's just like one sentence or paragraph that isn't quite right from your, your whole prose generation. With these, I like to limit the AI token limit, or press apply very quickly, as AI models can still kind of go on and on and on. So I'm going to pause there. You can see that you have got the Scarecrow descri uh, description here. So it's giving what you want. We'll go into detail in another lesson on how to actually change the token output. However, if you're curious, you can do it down here in the prompt section. Guided beats. Whereas summary beats still give the AI some freedom around your instructions, guided beats are there to make sure your digital intent actually follows your vision. The first one I want to show you is time slash location beats. I like to use these when setting up the initial scene or if there's a change of location and time. If you have codex entries for your locations, this is where mentioning them will allow your prose to shine. So for example, if I had um, a codex entry for Dorothy's house, I put a quaint uh, Southern American vibes, um, blue roof. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Okay, we have Dorothy waking up somewhere a little bit unfamiliar. It's described the house, so you can see the blue roof here. If you had a more fleshed out description of the location, you'd see how it really would push the narrative and save you having to kind of ensure that everything is consistent um, or that you're remembering everything correctly. Next up is dialogue beats. If you know how a conversation is going to go, but you don't want to have to write down all the little bits of action and thoughts in between each beat, then this is the way to go. Yeah. I like to write these out in script format because I find it kind of helps make it clearer in my mind. And you could also add in actions or anything if you had like a particular, um, a particular image in your head. So here we can see that it's added a lot of creativity around the the text that we have put. Um, it's still, you know, it's very different to the original. And obviously, because I've just put female, it doesn't know that this is the witch of the uh, the good witch of the north. However, it's taken it and is is pushing through and writing, you know, some not bad prose. Likewise, we can take this premise and do instruction beats by telling the AI what to write in a kind of mini report. It's giving clear instructions and trying to like remove that ambiguity that occurs. Because sometimes, I don't know if you find this, but sometimes the AI will start to write after a beat has ended and it'll continue on and you're like, no, I wanted the bit that's actually in the beat. Okay, so we can see here that we've got Dorothy uh, making some food and we can see her talking to the dog, which is basically what I instructed. However, you can see that things have started to kind of... Um, continue on, the prose hasn't stopped where we want it to. We can also make beats that focus on character motivation. If we want the AI to write character-driven prose without dictating the specific interaction. So here we have Dorothy meeting the Scarecrow, they have a conversation, and we know that the motivations of each character, and so let's see how that then turns out in the conversation. Okay, so we can see here, the Scarecrow is wanting to remove the stick in his back, and Dorothy wants to go home and you can see that it is coming, it's a little bit like on the nose, but it is coming through and it's showing that the, the conversation is happening and you know, but it's not sticking exactly to the original script. It is giving creativity and you know, some good things here. Okay, so you've done all the work, hit go, but it still doesn't seem to want to work. What if I'm not getting the prose I desire from my beats? Let's go over some brief troubleshooting. 
The first one that a lot of users see is the AI continues to write beyond the scope of my beats, i.e. it just continues writing the story and often goes off in weird tangents. So a quick fix for this is to try and use some bracketed instructions like stop at this point, don't go any further, end here, etc. in the beat. This has limited, um, depending on the model you use, either this can work very well or it gets completely ignored. There's kind of, it's kind of an either or situation. So model dependent, that is a, a quick way to fix it. However, this issue often occurs when you're not specific enough in your beats. If the AI isn't guided sufficiently um, in what it feels is a beat, especially when it's being told to write X hundred amount of words, then it's gonna go off the rails, making up new locations and trying to find a natural way to conclude the story. AI likes to wrap things up in bows, so it's our job as writers to ensure that it doesn't do that. So you can try lowering the overall word count or you can give it more information to fill that word count that we're kind of prompting it to do. Okay, so what about if new characters keep getting invented and just like pulled out of a hat? Say we had this and he, this just said, everyone inside. There aren't any codex en entries mentioned. Uncle Henry probably, probably would come up but then we might end up with a random sister or cousin or grandparent that just gets brought into the narrative. However, by saying Dorothy and Antem, we're driving the AI to think, okay, well, these are the characters we've got and let's use those before we start adding in Mildreds, etc. But what about if the AI is kind of summarizing the beat and not giving you any um, dialogue, if it's just telling? then we can try using the dialogue beat if we know what we want the characters to say. However, if you don't know, we can also try using instruction beats. Show X and Y having a conversation about Z. Our banana um, example. And finally, what do we do if the characterization is all wrong? Like, it's just making this like generic bland character and like our main character is meant to be, you know, epic. So we can experiment with codex entries. If you want your character to do something specific, mention it in the beat. But if it's a general character trait, make sure it's obvious in the codex. You can always mention it more than once or just like prune your entry to ensure that what you want the AI to write about is actually included in the codex entries. You can also try cloning and editing the system prompt if you're finding issues continuing. So some small changes you can make include reducing the word or token output when too much is being written. So if we have here in the instructions, it says to write 900 words. We could change that to 200, 300, if you were wanting to write short, more concise beats. We can also include new instructions to manipulate the prose. However, this does work better when we have models that listen to instructions more, such as GPT-4, Claude, the more expensive ones. If anything goes wrong, try the beat with the system prompt and then work from there. Here are some additional tips for getting the best from your beats when working with AI. Firstly, use names instead of pronouns. Especially if you have multiple characters of the same gender, the AI won't always infer correctly who is saying what. And so by using their names, you're guiding it and ensuring that the AI knows exactly what you're talking about. It's worth bearing in mind that different AI models have been trained on different data for different purposes. As such, you might find that some are better at following instructions, whereas others might give lovely prose, but prose that veers off your original intent very quickly. The system prompts include models with settings as tested by the community, so these are a good place to start. However, systems such as Open Router offer so many options that you can just go crazy playing around with it. Try combining beat structures within your chapter. You might find that you prefer to control the dialogue, but in an action or fight scene, you want the AI to have a little more freedom. So there's no reason that you can't like mix and match your styles as the chapter progresses. Here, in Novel Crafter, the system prompt reads from previously written words. As you can see, yeah. By beginning the chapter yourself, the AI reads the words that you've written and it can kind of try and match them, improving continuity. Likewise, if you edit the output prose as you go, 
the AI kind of comes to mimic and learn your good habits as the chapter progresses. Okay guys, codex entries are your best friend. Novel Crafter pulls in information from any mentioned entry in your beat. So keeping these concise and with all the relevant data is essential for getting prose that is relevant and cohesive and to not have the same description repeated over and over again. Edit as you go, you can change them chapter by chapter and kind of include the information that's most relevant for where you're at. Global codex entries are also a great way of influencing the writing of AI. Instead of having to mention the relevant data each time, you can have your world building always be in context. This includes keywords for your genre. You go here, new entry, story genre. So simple words like noir, western, or hard-boiled science fiction can have a big influence on the text you're wanting. Or if you go for romantic language, you know, you can kind of fine tune the output by kind of giving it keywords. As you can see here, it's a global entry. It's always included. To summarize, in this lesson, we looked at why we need to use beats when writing with AI, how we can construct those beats, learning techniques that are aligned with pantsers who want more freedom, and plotters that want to be able to control the output prose. We also learnt how we can begin to troubleshoot our beats if they're not giving us the desired prose. And finally, some tips and tricks for how to use Novel Crafter when writing your beats. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about anything that's been spoken about in this video, leave a comment down below or go onto our Discord and the community is more than happy to help you out.